fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Cactus City. I owe Silver. Holler! Four men backed out of the Mustang Cafe into the driving rain. Their guns blazed in a wild attempt to cover an unexpected retreat. Their leader, a tall, stoop-shouldered man who clutched a canvas sack under one arm, shouted orders that no one heard. Even so, the Frank Slaughter gang was completing another successful holdup. Go this way and get your horses! They were at a disadvantage, being outlined with a light from the open doorway. But some of the outlaws flying lead was taking heavy toll. Cautious hands holding a Winchester hesitated a moment too long by the window. A bullet ricocheted. And those same hands were clutching the rain-soaked ground. Not over a hundred yards from the Mustang Cafe, and hidden completely in the shadows of a giant eucalyptus tree, two men brought their horses to a sudden halt. It was the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Oh, Silver, hold, 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 Wait here with the horses. I'll be right back. Uh, Tonto, bring rifle. No, a gun's all I'll need. Wait for me. As the Lone Ranger ran toward the scene of the holdup, he unholstered a silver-mounted gun that swung lightly at his hip. Then he stepped quickly behind a ramshackle wooden fence directly across from the Mustang Cafe. A stray bullet struck the muddy ground close to his boot heel. The masked man raised his gun and took careful aim. Hey, Joe, you want me to get a ride? I nailed the hombre at the window. Where's Sam? I'm right here. Oh! Sam, you heard no, but my gun is right. Come on. Somebody shot from across the street. And watch you. Pick the gun right out of his farmer's hand. All right, you. Get your hands up. I lost my gun. I can't. Yeah, call this one over to the jail and lock him up. Sure, Sheriff. Start moving, mister. I'll line up a posse and take out after the rest of them Al No, sir. No. Please don't do that. Mr. Carver. Don't try to track him down. That was Frank Slaughter's gang. Of course it was Slaughter, and I'm going after him. No, you can't. No gang of Al is going to get away with robbing and killing as long as I am Sheriff. Wait. You know why I'm asking you not to go after him? Frank Slaughter kidnapped my daughter. He's holding her for ransom. If you go after him, I'm afraid he'll take it out on Cora. Mr. Carver, we can't let Frank Slaughter get by with murder just because... I want to save my daughter's life. Please, Sheriff, I'll raise the money for her ransom in a few days, and then I'll ride with you and kill Slaughter with my bare hands. Mr. Carver's talking sense, Sheriff. No telling what Slaughter will do to Cora if you close in on him. I don't need any advice from you, Dan Minnick. I'm giving it to you anyway. Mr. Carver's right. Cora's life is too important to risk taking chances. Please, Sheriff. Well... Reckon there ain't much else I can do now. Couldn't track him in this rain anyhow. I'll go down to the jail and see that Jeb's got that one varmint under lock and key. (laughs) 
Jeb. Oh, Jeb. Now, uh, where can Jeb's I... Jeb's upstairs, Sheriff, locking up the prisoner. What the... Well, the Lone Ranger. What are you doing here? Waiting for you, Sheriff. I came inside your office because I don't enjoy standing in the rain. You should have been here a few minutes ago. Slaughter gang was in town. They held up the cafe. Yes, I know. You know? I was across the street trying to give you all the help I could. But it was risky. You and your men were in my line of fire. You mean you... Oh, now I savvy how the gun was shot out of that hombre's hand. I might have known that was your brand of shooting. Aren't you, uh, going after Slaughter? No, I can't. Old man Carver begged me not to. Oh, who's Carver? He owns the biggest spreader here in the basin. I guess in a way he's right about tailing Slaughter. What way? A couple of weeks ago, Slaughter kidnapped Carver's daughter. Low down skunks holding her for ransom. So naturally, her father's worried. I don't blame him. Yeah. Well, the old man's willing to pay the ransom. 10000 in cash. But he has to get the money from the east. He won't be here till next week. In the meantime, Slaughter figures he can ride roughshod over the county and you won't touch him. That's about it. Has he talked to anyone since the kidnapping? Oh, just a note to Carver. Dan Minnick was so mad when that happened, he almost went hog wild. But the old man calmed him down. Dan Minnick? The foreman of the Carver Ranch. I guess he's kind of sweet on Cora. I see. If I only knew where that side winder and his gang of snakes hide out, I'd run him down anyway. Didn't your deputy just take one of his men to the jail upstairs? Make him talk. No, that's Sam Carp, small-time gunslinger. He's one of the gang, but Frank Slaughter's too smart to tell him anything. There must be some way. No, I don't think uh, so. Wait a minute. What? That reward notice you have tacked on the wall over there. Oh, that's not a picture of one of Slaughter's gang. That's Cal Fisher, train robber. Hasn't been around these parts for a year or more. Yes, I know, but uh, look at it closely. What's the idea? Now, look at me. Cal Fisher wears a mask. So do I. He wears a dark shirt like the one I'm wearing. Yeah, you do look something like the varmint. What? Arrest me, Sheriff. Tell everyone that I'm Cal Fisher, the train robber. Then put me in that cell upstairs with Sam Carp. What for? I'll gain his confidence. We'll make a break. You'll take me to Frank Slaughter's hideout. Nah, it won't work. Sam Carp's a cagey critter. It'll work if you arrest me in broad daylight. What do you mean? Tomorrow morning, about sunup, let your deputy see me apparently trying to break in the general store across the livery stable. What good will that do? He'll call you and spread the alarm. Then you can make the arrest with plenty of witnesses. Mm. Suppose you and Carp do make a break and you do locate Slaughter. How can you nail all them varmints without risking Cora Carver's life? We'll meet that situation when the time comes. I must go now. Tano, my Indian friend, is waiting for me. But what like All you have to do, Sheriff, is arrest an outlaw tomorrow morning. His name will be Cal Fisher. Warm rays of a rising sun found Cactus City sleeping peacefully. It also found Jeb Kirk, the sheriff's deputy, under strict order to patrol Main Street. Oh, can't see any sense in me walking. Say, well, I'll be... Sheriff! Sheriff! What's wrong, Jeb? A man trying to break into Hank Dawson's store. He's masked, packing two guns, and I Come thought on. I'd... Ice them claws, stranger. I've got you covered. Sheriff, I don't think you... You're shooting high, Sheriff. Bring it down there. Get you. That one drilled your hat. You'd better yeah, watch it. he's making this thing too doggone real. What? Well, uh, nothing, nothing. Hold your fire. I'm through. Throw down that gun. Keep your hands up. Don't worry. I know I'm licked. I'll say you are. Well, I'll be... What's the matter, Sheriff? Jeb. You know who this polecat is? Just another owl hoot on the prod. Oh, no, he ain't. Everybody in the state's been looking for this gent. It's Cal Fisher, the train robber. Cal Fisher? Are you sure? He matches the picture on a reward notice I've had for over a year. Ain't that right, Fisher? I'm not talking. I've got a cell waiting for you, Fisher. Get moving. Are you sure, Jeb? Of course I'm sure. The sheriff's got Cal Fisher under lock and key. Fisher in jail? Yep. Sheriff's locking him up now. It's Cal Fisher, all right. The sheriff said so. Uh, 
Uh, Fisher, if this cell is good enough for one of Slaughter's gang, it's good enough for you. You won't keep me here. Well, you haven't had any trouble so far. Ask your cellmate. Both of you can stew in your own juice a while. Say, are you really Cal Fisher? What if I am? Well, you talk big, I don't know. I am big. They can't keep me bottled up in a leaky jail like this. I'm getting out. Yeah? Tell me how and I'll go with you. No, thanks. I'm not taking any little two-bit cattle thief along with me. Two... Say, I... I'm one of Frank Slaughter's boys. Yeah, who's Frank Slaughter? One of the biggest operators in these parts. We held up the Mustang Cafe in this burg last night. Couldn't have been much good. You ended up here. Well, it wasn't my fault. Or Frank's either. Somebody started slinging lead from across the street, made me drop my gun. I see. But if you're going to break out of here, take me along with you. Well, I don't know. Oh, you'll need a hideout. I'll take you to Frank Slaughter. Maybe you can use a gent like you. I always work alone. Listen, Frank's got the deadwood hung on this county for anything he wants to do. How's that? Uh, I can't tell you. But I'll take you to Frank. All right. Maybe I'm crazy, but I'll take a chance. Good. How'll we make the break? Start a racket that'll bring that lunkhead sheriff up here. And then on, I'll handle it. I think my horse is still in the corral out and back. So is mine. All right, go on, start yelling. No! Oh! oh. Hey, what's wrong with you two hombres? Oh. I think this man's sick, Sheriff. Oh. Give him a drink of water. Oh. Well, all right. Anybody think this was a hotel instead of a jail? All right, carp out the back way. Get the horses. What the... Pretend that I hit you fall down. Oh. Oh. That's good. You'll hear from me, Sheriff. Hey, sir, I'm coming! Did you slug him? Had to. Get to the horses, quick. Here's my cayuse. Grab him. We've got a ride. Here's Silver. Fine horse you got there, Fisher. Steady, boy. I like him. <laughs> Sheriff's got a posse. We'd better move. Get up, boy. Come on, Silver. Masked man and the outlaw rode hard for several miles south of Cactus City. And they slackened their pace and turned west into the hill country. A winding trail led through dense thickets of chaparral and scrub pines. They crossed a dry riverbed and entered a deep-cut ravine whose steep walls were corroded by centuries of wind and rain. When they reached a sandstone cliff, Sam Carp, the outlaw, called a halt. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, is this a hideout? No, it's up ahead. But I thought some of the boys might have their eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Must be Steve. I figured we couldn't get this close without being seen. Hey, Steve! It's me, Sam Carp! He doesn't seem to hear you. Yes, he does. He'll be here in a minute. Sam! We thought that sheriff had you nailed. Well, Cal here, help me make a break. Who? Cal. This gent is Cal Fisher. Wait. Frank's coming down. Tell that to him. Well, sure I will, but Sam, I don't... I'm glad to see you out. Hello, Frank. We figured out riding into town tonight and taking that jail apart. It... Who's the mask out? Who'd you get with you? Well, he helped me make the break. This is Cal Fisher. What did you say? He just told you my name. You've heard of me, haven't you? Yeah, I have. The big boss I work for, he's up in my head out now. He's heard of you, too. I'd like to meet your boss, Slaughter. Maybe he and I could do some business. Maybe you could. He wears a mask just like you do. Come up and meet him. Lead the way. Nah. Uh, You'd better go first. The boys now will be right behind you. Thanks. By the way, Slaughter, who is your boss? His name is Cal Fisher. Now get moving, stranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Under the drawn guns of Frank Slaughter, Steve, and Sam, the Lone Ranger was forced to dismount and lead his horse, Silver, along a narrow, rocky path. A few minutes later, they reached a broad clearing, on one side of which there was a rough wooden shack. It was the outlaw's hideout. Not a word had been spoken during the short trip. The Lone Ranger knew the outlaws thought he was an imposter, but they weren't sure. There was only one thing to do, keep them guessing. Uh, this is your hideout, huh? Yeah, the boss will sure will be anxious to meet you. Frank, don't you think we Frank, ought to... I'll get Cal out here. A moment later, the doorway of the wooden shack opened, and a man came out to join Frank Slaughter. The Lone Ranger was amazed at the striking similarity in appearance between himself and the man who was evidently Cal Fisher. The two men walked quickly toward him. This is the hombre, Cal. He's trying to tell us he's you. Yeah, we both wear masks. Yeah, he does look something like me. Well, what do you got to say for yourself? I'd rather not say anything. You're not Cal Fisher, and you better talk fast if you want to stay healthy. Cheap cow hand palming himself off as me. I don't like it. Tell the truth, neither do I. I'm right handy with both of these guns, stranger. You'd better talk. The Lone Ranger's hands were resting easily on the metal buckle of his cartridge belt. But a split second later, and with a lazy gliding motion that developed into eye-defying swiftness, they dropped to leather holsters and straightened with two silver-mounted guns that spoke almost together. Oh, my hand! You're not hurt. Maybe a scratch along your arm, nothing more. Did you see that, Sam? Yeah, shot away both of Cal's guns. Where are you? Better keep them in the leather, Slaughter. Cal, what do I do? Oh, my hand's hurt. I'm going over the shack. Come on, Frank. What do we do about him? Both of you would better decide that any name I care to use is my own business. Make it over. Come on, Frank. You ain't going to stand for that, are you, Cal? Yeah, one of his bullets creased the back of my hand. I've got to tie it up. Who do you think he is? I don't know, and I don't care. we got to get rid of him. Here, wrap this bandana around my hand. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you say get rid of him, but you saw the way he handles them guns of his. Well, that's your worry. This is your gang. I said get rid of him. How about the cover ransom money? And the old man expects it to come in from the east on the night's train. In gold? Yeah. And I want you and the boys to meet that train. What do you mean? Grab the cash box as soon as the depot agent gets it from the express car. I thought we were holding the girl so Carver could pay us that money. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and we'll keep on holding her. If we grab the gold before he gets it, he'll have to rustle some more. In the meantime, you and the gang can keep operating. That's a slick idea. What time's the train coming in? Oh, midnight. But you'd better be there a few minutes before. We'll be there. Frank! That farmer just hightailed it. What? When'd he leave? Just climbed on that white stallion of his and took off. Why did you stub him? I ain't arguing with any hombre that shoots like he does. Oh, uh, That's worry. all right, Frank. <laughs> just saves you the uh, trouble of putting a bullet in his back. Yeah, but what about him? I'll meet you here after the holdup. Now remember, a train comes in at midnight. I ain't forget it. Frank, tell me something. What? Is he really Cal Fisher? Sure. Then who's the other hombre? The one who helped me break jail? I don't know. But I ain't gonna worry about it. Frank Slaughter might have thought differently if he could have seen the Lone Ranger at that moment. The masked man had left the outlaw's camp and ridden to a small grove of trees near the outskirts of Cactus City. It was his prearranged meeting place with Tonto. Oh, Silver, whoa, oh, oh, oh. Hello. Uh, out of here. Now listen carefully. I haven't much time because I've got to get back to the outlaw hideout. Uh. Go to the sheriff. Tell him I've located Frank Slaughter's camp and I'm going to stay with him. Uh, me tell him. Tell him to form a posse. Then you pick up my trail and guide him. Tonto, do it. Signal me when you're near, but don't close in until I return the signal. You understand? Be savvy. What signal? The night bird call. Uh, Tonto savvy. Remember, no matter what happens, don't close in until I return the signal. Uh. Come on, Silver. Oh, oh, Silver, oh, oh. Easy, big fella. <laughs> Guess I haven't even missed us, Silver. Doesn't seem to be anybody. You're back again. Yes, Sam, I'm back. I can't figure you out. The man with the mask had the same trouble. Where is he? He's gone. Frank's over in the shack. If uh, you thanks. Want to... Hey, what 
I wouldn't reach for those guns if I were you. What do you want? The answers to a few questions. What? I heard some talk as I drifted down the line, Slaughter. Here you've got the law around here hogtied. She rustled off a girl you're holding her as hostage and uh, for ransom. Is that right? What if it is? Where's the girl now? Who do you want to do? Cut in on the payoff? I might. You're not going to get it. <laughs> yes, I will. Because I'm going to sit right here until you change your mind. It's <laughs> so all right with me, stranger. I haven't got anything else to do but sit here. Neither have I. Through the long afternoon and evening hours, the Lone Ranger sat and watched Frank Slaughter, the outlaw. Very few words were spoken. Several times, Slaughter made a move to rise from his chair but changed his mind when he saw the masked man's hand slide toward the silver-mounted guns. Each time he sank back in his seat, he remembered the lightning draw that the masked man had displayed when they first met. Who was this man, and what was he doing here? Why had he posed as Cal Fisher? Most important of all, how was he going to leave with the masked man watching his every move? Finally, he realized that the hour of midnight was approaching. He would have to do something. Uh, Say, this is kind of crazy, ain't it? I mean, you and me sitting here like this... Where's the girl you're holding for ransom? Light. I can't tell you. Then we'll continue to sit here until you can tell me. Suppose I did tell. What good would it do you? You can't get the money alone. That's my business. Yeah. If it's cash you want, I might be able to put you in the way of making some money tonight. Where? Well, there's a train coming into Cactus City at 12 o'clock. There's 10,000 in gold on it. Me and the boys are planning on meeting it. Where's the girl? Oh, forget about the girl. And you might as well forget about that train with uh, 10,000 in gold. But if we don't meet the train, Cal, All right. I'll tell you where the cover girl is. Where? A little shack just like this one, about three miles up the canyon. I see. Who's with her up at this shack? Nobody, I guess, unless Cal Fisher's up there. Who reigns a kidnapping, Fisher or you? Well, it was Cal's when idea. When are you going to meet him again? He's going to meet us here tonight after we hold up the train. All right, Slaughter. Come on, we're going to ride. Where? Up to that shack where the girl is? Of course not. We'll take Sam and Steve and meet the train. That's bringing 10,000 in gold. A short time later, a small group of horsemen reined up and dismounted in the heavy shadows back of the tiny Cactus City Railway Station. Several times during their ride from the outlaw hideout, the Lone Ranger had heard the soft notes of a night bird but he had not answered it, and he felt reasonably sure that none of the gang had noticed this strange bird call that Tonto and the Lone Ranger used as a secret method of communication. The outlaw group discussed their plans for a few moments, then mounted and rode to a spot near the track where they were completely hidden from sight. Now keep it quiet, boys. I said quiet. What would you suggest that I do in this little hole-up slaughter? Just use them shooting at you, stranger. I guess you know how to do that. Will there be guards on the train? Might be. And if there are, we've got to nail them. The gold. Where will that be? It'll be handed to the station agent. And I'll be right behind him. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Old man Carver might be here to meet the train, too. Carver? Who's he? Well, it's his gold. Money he's going to use to ransom the girl. But uh, we're going to collect it first. Is that it? Yeah. And if the guards start slinging lead, we have to shoot. Don't hit Carver. We need him alive. I can understand that. Anything else? Well, Cal said to be careful of Carver's foreman, too. Who's he? I don't know. I've never seen him. His name's Dan Minnick. In other words, kill anybody but Carver and Dan Minnick. Right. Here she comes, boys. You better take the left side, stranger. Sam, Steve, Joe, and me will come around from the right. Where are you going to ride after this thing's over? Like that, Ed. Oh. Let's hear. Let's go. Steve. Yeah? Stick on the tail of that dumb lobo. The lead starts flying. See if he stops some of it. Sure, I'll take care of it. What was that? Nothing. Keep your eyes on that ombre and don't lose them. I won't. Come on, boys. Let's get this baggage off. They're opening the express car. All right, boys, this is it. Come on. Over this way, this way. 
Got her and keep them there. Where are you? You just lost your gun. You're not hurt. I've got the rest of them lined up on the other side. Who's this? Slaughter. You better take him along, too. It'll be a pleasure. Get moving, Slaughter, and keep reaching. Keep us hurry. You catch all the crooks? Not all of them, Tonto. There's one more, but I'm afraid he won't wait. be. Wait, I want to thank you. The sheriff and your Indian friend have told me what you've done. Thanks are necessary, Mr. Carver. Your daughter's safe. You'll find her in a little shack about three miles above the outlaw's camp. Well, I... Tonto will be able I... to find it. He'll take you up there. I don't know what to say. It's wonderful, isn't it, Dan? Yes, 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 indeed it is, Mr. Carver. Oh, this is Dan Minnick, my ranch foreman. Oh, I'm very glad to know you, and uh, I'm grateful, too, for everything that you've done. Well, that's perfectly all. Wait a minute. Well, what? What's wrong? Let me see your right hand, Mr. Minnick. Why, I... No, you don't! What's wrong? Just as I thought. Here's another prisoner, Sheriff. What? You mean Dan Minnick? This man's name isn't Minnick. It's really Cal Fisher. Cal Fisher? If you want any proof, it's right there on the back of his right hand. A bullet from one of my guns made that scratch this morning. You're under arrest, Fisher. Not while I'm... I wouldn't try that if I were you. There he is, Sheriff. He's unconscious now, but he'll recover. Hello? Uh, I'm here. The Sheriff can handle these outlaws. You take Mr. Carver to the shack to find his daughter. Uh. Here, Silver. Steady, big fella. I'll meet you later, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Sure. Who is that man? What's his name? <laughs> Shucks, I, I thought everybody knew him. That's a Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.